In this unit, we're going to continue looking at nucleophilic additions to ketones and aldehydes, but we're going to focus now on carbon nucleophiles. Carbon nucleophiles clearly have an excess of electron density at carbon, and this may involve a full-blown formal negative charge or just large partial negative charge. Often, we don't deal directly with carbanions because carbanions are extremely reactive electron donors. Instead, we deal with what are called organometallic reagents, which contain a carbon-metal bond. The metal might be something like lithium, magnesium, or a transition metal like zinc, copper, or mercury. And in all of these reagents, the metal is less electronegative than carbon, and so the metal has partial positive charge, and the carbon has partial negative charge. These are called organometallic reagents. The extent of that electronegativity difference between the metal and carbon gives us insight into the magnitudes of these partial charges and the nature of the bond. Specifically, is the bond ionic or covalent? When that electronegativity difference is very large, as is the case for something like lithium or sodium alkali metal, then essentially the bond is ionic. It acts basically like Li plus C minus or K plus C minus. But when we get to the other side of the periodic table, toward that right-hand side of the transition series, we start seeing bonds that are much more covalent in character. Mercury is famous for this. For example. Carbon's partial charge is much less negative, and the bond is much more like a covalent bond than an ionic bond when we start getting on that right-hand side of the transition series. Zinc actually is similar. We'll look in more detail at organometallics in the remainder of this video, and once we're comfortable with the nucleophilic reactivity at carbon, we'll move into their reactions with ketones and aldehydes, which are predominantly nucleophilic additions that form substituted alcohols. The hallmark of an organometallic compound, as suggested by its name, is the presence of a carbon-metal bond within the structure. The electronegativity of metals, which are on the left-hand side of the periodic table, is low. Another way of saying this is that metals are electropositive. They tend to release rather than hold on to electrons. At least with respect to carbon, that's certainly the case. The electropositive nature of the metal leads to a polarization of the metal-carbon bond toward carbon, so that the carbon atom is partially negative and the metal partially positive. This makes the carbon linked to the metal a good nucleophile or electron donor. Donation of the electrons in the MC bond toward an electrophile so that carbon forms a bond would generate M+. And for a metal species, that's often a relatively stable cation. But that said, the reactivity of an organometallic compound depends profoundly on the nature of the metal, more specifically on how electropositive that metal is. Electropositive metals, which are found on the left-hand side of the periodic table, group 1 and group 2 especially, have a stronger desire to give up their electrons, and this results in more ionic bonds, which place more negative charge on the carbon involved in the bond. As we get to more electronegative metals on the right-hand side of the transition series, things like zinc and mercury, we find that the bonds are much more covalent in nature. The partial negative charge on carbon is not as negative, and the carbon is not as strong a nucleophile. Let's look now at some electron density maps that show the arrangement of electrons within different types of organometallic compounds. Just as a quick refresher, keep in mind on these maps that where we see red or orange color, these are areas of large negative charge or high electron density. Where we see blue or deep green color, these are areas of positive charge. So the first one shown here is ethyl lithium, and here we see the key carbon lithium bond. Notice that as expected, this carbon that's linked to lithium is colored red, indicating very large negative charge on that atom and very high electron density on the carbon, while in the vicinity of the lithium atom, we see a deep blue color, indicating that the lithium is essentially positive. Really, the best way to visualize a structure like this is not as a discrete molecule like this, C2H5Li, but actually as a compound with negative charge on carbon and positive charge on lithium. This is an alternative resonance form, if you like, where we've broken the carbon-lithium bond and given the electrons to carbon. When we replace lithium with magnesium, we're stepping to the right on the periodic table, and this makes the carbon a little bit less negatively charged. So notice we've gone from clearly a deep red color in the organolithium to something that's more yellow looking 
in the organomagnesium compound. This is called a Grignard reagent. We'll see them in more detail a little bit later. Notice still, however, that the magnesium atom, here positioned between chloride and the organic fragment, is still blue, still positively charged. And so for the Grignard reagent, we can also draw a great resonance structure where we push the electrons in the carbon-magnesium bond onto carbon. Once again, the structure we get has negative charge on the carbon atom, indicating that it's a good nucleophile, and positive charge on the magnesium atom. One other thing to notice here is that the chloride has a very large electron density thanks to the electronegativity of chlorine. That's why we see a deep red color on the right-hand side of the Grignard reagent. Moving further to the right into the transition series, we get even less electron-rich carbons. So here we have an organozinc with a zinc atom at the center, flanked just like in the Grignard reagent by a chlorine on the right and an ethyl fragment on the left. And here we see the carbon is still somewhat nucleophilic. That's evidenced by the blue color around the zinc atom. So the zinc is partially positive and the carbon partially negative. And we can definitely draw a resonance structure where we put negative charge on that carbon atom. But the bond is definitely not as polarized as it was in the organomagnesium, the Grignard reagent, and the organolithium. This has advantages, as we'll see shortly. Finally, if we look at an organocuprate, which actually has a net negative charge, we see that the carbon is even less electron-rich than the organozinc. In fact, we're getting into almost green-looking or blue-looking territory here. And so, while we again can draw a resonance structure with negative charge on that carbon, this resonance structure is becoming less important for the organocuprate than it is in the other organometallic reagents. So one way to view this continuum from the organolithium to the organocuprate on the right is in terms of the importance of these alternative resonance forms to each structure. This ionic resonance form is key to the reactivity of organolithiums. It tells you pretty much everything you need to know about the behavior of an organolithium. It is essentially a carbanion. On the other side, the organocuprate, the carbon-copper bond is much more covalent in nature. And so while the carbon is nucleophilic, it's nucleophilic in a fundamentally different way than the organolithium. It's not as reactive in general. It's more functional group, group tolerant. And it does some different types of reactions, as we'll see a little bit later in the course. So we can think of organometallic compounds as existing on a continuum. On the left-hand side, we have the compounds in which the carbon metal bond is essentially completely ionic, C minus M plus. These are Grignard reagents containing carbon magnesium bonds and organolithiums containing carbon lithium bonds. In the middle, which tends to be within the transition series, in the middle of the transition series, we get these compounds that are still strong nucleophiles at carbon, but whose reactivity can be modified based on what else is bonded to the metal center. So these are things like carbon titanium, carbon nickel, carbon palladium complexes, where the other things present in the organometallic compound or complex can affect reactivity. And then on the right-hand side, we have organometallic reagents that are, again, still nucleophilic at carbon, but much more mildly so. They're much more tolerant of electrophilic functional groups in general. 